Good day. I'm Martin Gago with Market Radius Research. It's Thursday, April the 28th, and we've got CEO or President Mark Perlman joining us of International Zeolite. International Zeolite is a producer of Zeolite and Zeolite value-added products for agricultural, industrial, and home uses. Very glad to have Mark of International Zeolite joining us. I believe there are some very exciting opportunities for Zeolite as the agriculture and other industries are changing how they do things for both economic and environmental incentives. I'm looking more about uh, learning more about Zeolite and uh, their uh, branded uh, proprietary Norea product. But please remember, this is neither a recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company and do your own due diligence. So Mark, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us. And let's hear about International Zeolite. Well, thanks, Martin, and, and a huge uh, thank you to uh, Radius Research for, for hosting today. I'd also like to maybe just do a quick shout out to uh, uh, International Zeolite's leadership team for all the work that they've done over the last year to reposition and rebrand uh, International Zeolite as a uh, eco-friendly uh, producer and distributor of uh, Zeolite products. So. Um, today, what I'm going to do is, is provide the audience kind of an overview of the company, um, our mission, where we're going, how our revenues are doing, and what the investment opportunities are. So let's start with what is uh, uh, International Zeolite. So International Zeolite has two large mining properties of zeolite in British Columbia. We not only mine zeolite, we also process and package and distribute zeolite. We also have a subsidiary uh, division called Ecotraction, which is generating that revenue today uh, through its sales of zeolite products for home use. Over the last year, we recognize a huge emergence in the marketplace, a focus on environmentally safe, sustainable solutions. As a result, we've rebranded our organization. We see a significant opportunity to use naturally occurring zeolite minerals to solve for a lot of environmental problems out there. And we'll get into that. So our mission is really to produce uh, uh, high, high value products, not just natural zeolite, but we've also have a proprietary zeolite for agriculture where we have uh, actually changed the look and feel of the zeolite to enable significant benefits for agriculture. We want to transform agriculture. We want to transform industry and we want to transform households to using more sustainable, superior means of uh, environmentally friendly products. And that's really our focus. So I'm just going to go to the next slide here. If we look at where we play today, in terms of our revenue model, we're really focused in providing zeolite solutions for animal feed, artificial turf, composting. In the cement areas, uh, we are looking at using zeolite as a replacement for fly ash or an enhancement for cement products. Really, zeolite does incredible stuff in soil amendment, uh, enables uh, farmers to get better use out of their uh, soils. We currently operate uh, a number of municipalities are using our products to replace salt and using zeolite to uh, solve for ice problems. And the big area of opportunity for us is obviously in water reclamation. As you learn about zeolite, it's a nanotechnology that does incredible things for cleaning up toxicity out of water. So in each of those areas where we actually are driving revenues today, we're also seeing a very uh, healthy uh, year over year growth. So why invest in, in international zeolite? So over the, the last year and a half, we've rebranded the organization to focus in, not only in the environmental space, the green space, but really focus very much in being a differentiator between uh, existing zeolite suppliers in the sense that not only do we provide zeolite products, what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide value add solutions. And so our different, our core differentiator is not only do we have natural zeolite products, but we have value added zeolite products through our proprietary technology. We believe we have solutions for agriculture and we believe that the timing and the emergence of zeolite to solve for environmental problems is now. If for example, you look at what's happening in the last year with fertilizer costs, 
Russia has stopped exporting fertilizers. China has also stopped uh, exporting fertilizers. The cost of fertilizers have gone up nearly 400 to 500% year over year. Zeolite allows the grower to use less fertilizer, allows the grower to have incremental growth of his crops, but also saves that grower significant dollars by avoiding expensive uses of, uh, of uh, fertilizers. We also know that um, what runs a company are good people. In the last year, we have onboarded a team of six senior executives that have expertise in supply chain optimization, in agriculture, and in industry. And we believe that by uh, investing in, in a strong leadership team that we can uh, drive uh, some of the optimization, some of the new revenue models that we're looking for. So market timing is perfect. Uh, leadership is in place, and there's significant untapped product use applications. I would say also that if you look at where the marketplace is in, in zeolite because it's emergent, because of the environmental uh, advantages of it, it's a very fragmented market right now. Our, our position is to change that, to create extreme awareness about what zeolite does for solving for environmental and climate related problems, but also bring the industry together and consolidate it through strong research and development. That's why we think uh, investing in international zeolite is, is, is a prime opportunity right now. Our business model, and uh, this is a bit of a convoluted uh, 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 slide here, but I'll try to get through it. What you'll see here is we are very much focused on independent research and development to drive out third-party validation of our products. If you look on the left-hand side of this slide, this basically tells you where we are playing today. We're in agriculture. We're driving revenue out of animal feed, odor control, soil amendment. And in industry, we're already driving revenue out of water treatment, artificial grass infill. In the home use through our eco-traction division, we're driving revenues out of cleaning, and deodorizing, and the winter traction, salt replacement. It's the right hand that differentiates us. Um, we have acquired a technology that's been under development for the last 15 years. And over the last year, we have validated that, that technology actually does what it says it does. This is an exclusive technology that we've acquired that allows us to embed nutrients directly into the zeolite particle. By doing that, the grower uses 90% less fertilizer. And we'll, show, we'll talk a little bit about that today. But what differentiates international zeolite from any other zeolite mining organization or mining company is that we really have a group of value products. And we also have a group of uh, scientists that are looking at solutions. So we try to be a solutions-based company as opposed to not just being a products-based company. So Mark, hi yeah. historically, zeolite, it was mined ground up into different uh, level uh, grain sizes and then sold at is, as is. There wasn't really a lot of upgrading it to the, the pros, it, to, the, to what it did. And, and you guys are putting R&D into sort of finding what can you, what else, how can you modify it so it's a higher value product, get better margins, not so much of a commodity. You're, you're not uh, reliant upon uh, commodity you, you don't set the price, the market sets the price. Correct, correct. So, and you're absolutely right. Um, I would say 90% of zeolite usage in the natural zeolite side is exactly as you've defined it. We mine the product, we then mesh it into different particle sizes, and then depending on those particle sizes, it, it's used as animal feed or soil amendment or water reclamation. Our differentiator is we want to actually now take that natural product that does incredible things and then treat it in such a way that it can do differential things. And that, and we'll talk about that in our Norea uh, slide, but you're absolutely correct. Could you just go like it, it? It has so many uses. It, it seems kind of crazy, like animal feed, odor control, soil, water, grass uh, cleaning. Uh, like, what is it? Of can you get, talk about some of like what? What does it do for animal feed? Is it just a, a cheap filler, or does it sort of help bring out nutrients in the food? Or uh, can you maybe talk about uh, some of those uses or the value add? What um, uh, 
zeolite brings to some of these markets? So let's talk about soil amendment. And I'll also cover uh, animal feed in a second. So in the area of soil amendment, by because the zeolite, and I, I think the next slide will help us understand what zeolite is. It's nature's nanotechnology, right? And zeolite has the ability to absorb water and absorb nutrients. When placed in the soil, it takes the soil and allows it to be not as compact. It allows roots to get better oxygen, it allows plants to grow better. In the area of animal feed, by using just 2% of what we call particleized or powdered zeolite, it removes ammonia from animals' guts and allows animals to grow better, grow faster, more healthier. Um, in artificial grass infill, for example, what it does, for example, is it removes ammonia from from underneath the artificial grass. So in, and in water treatment, zeolite is, is a natural fertil, uh, uh, filter for uh, toxins. And I think the next slide, Martin, might help uh, folks better understand that, if I could for a second. So I, I'm just gonna go back for a second here. So, so really, I think what's important is, is to bring to, to bear what is zeolite. And, and so what zeolite is, it's a naturally occurring uh, mineral found or created out of volcanic ash. What's interesting about it is it's highly negatively charged and it has a honeycomb or crystalline uh, structure that allows ions or, or large ions to be captured inside the particle itself. So in the case of water treatment, by using zeolite in, in polluted waters, it will remove toxic metals. It will hold those ions and those molecules, which are large inside the sleeves of the uh, mineral itself. In the areas of soil amendment, they will allow uh, water to be held. So it holds approximately 60% 60, 60 of its weight in these channels and sleeves. And so it's a very effective product in its raw and processed form for doing a whole bunch of group of things in a na very natural way, whether it's animal feed, water treatment, soil amendment. We know, for example, in concrete products, it may be an excellent replacement for fly ash. Fly ash, as we know is, or if we don't know, is, is a coal byproduct where they burn coal at a very high degree and then add the ash into the cement to allow it to dry. And that's the whole basis of Portland cement. We now know that zeolite, for example, uh, particleized can be, uh, through our, more of our R&D, can be a replacement for, for what they're using now, which is the fly ash coal product. And with coal uh, plants being shut down around the world, it may have significant opportunities for revenue and, and, and new opportunities to be a lot more environmentally safe. As you can imagine, whenever you're burning coal, you have high amounts of carbon also burning. So this is all about a product, Martin, that is significantly sustainable and environmentally friendly. And it's nature's. So uh, I, that gives you a feel for what the technology is by itself, what nature has produced. And and sorry, just, and it's uh, in volcanic ash. So basically there are these big deposits of it where there used to be volcanoes and all the ash would settle hundreds or billions of years ago or, or whatever. And you guys kind of scoop it out of the ground. Correct. There's about 52 types of zeolite. The other aspect of zeolite and, and what gives us a significant advantage is the zeolite that we mine has a high cash and exchange capability. So, so that allows us to absorb, for example, toxins out of water, hold the toxins so it's negatively charged, it removes all the positive toxins, but at the same time it allows through this ionic exchange capability, allows plant roots to get its potassium, get its nitrogen, get its potassium. So it's a carrier of nutrients as well as a delivery of nutrients. It's a very unique product from nature. All right, thanks. It, just briefly in our operations model, and we've spent the last year optimizing to allow us to scale. So on the uh, left-hand side of this uh, graph, you'll see the revenue streams that we currently are uh, driving. In agriculture, it's in the areas of animal feed, soil amendment and industry, it's artificial turf, composting, fly ash, water reclamation, road salt and sand replacement. The new uh, applications that you'll see underneath that 
are our NERIA, and we'll talk extensively about that because that is a extremely transformational product for agriculture. Our differentiator is the fact that we've invested heavily in research and development. If you take a look as you go along the supply chain and what supports those revenue streams is out of British Columbia, we have our Bromley Creek mine, which is currently fully operational. And we have a future uh, claim that's referred to as our Sun Group. Because of the cost and the heaviness of the metal, we've developed significant uh, relationships with other zeolite providers throughout the US and, and North America so that wherever it's cheaper to transport the product and it makes more sense to get that product, we have those relations. In terms of processing and packaging, we use third parties to mine our existing operations. We also use those same third parties to help us package and process it. In terms of marketing, our philosophy is also to use third party and large distributors. We also have, as I've indicated before, we have our own subsidiary company, Ecotraction, which has been branded over the last, last several years that deals directly with mass retail for the home youth. Norea is a brand new product. Um, we will use uh, zeolite not only from our own mines, but we'll also through partnership use zeolite with our Bear River partners out of the USA so that we have a complete optimized supply chain for the agriculture segment throughout North America. Our model basically says that we're going to sublicense the technology. We'll be the zeolite provider, but we'll sublicense the technology in order to process and package it. And then, of course, uh, we'll use large scale global distributors uh, that are already have the customers in place as our third party sub licensees. Well, this, also, is a, so, sorry? Sorry, this is a bulk type uh, product and shipping is obviously always a, uh, a big concern. So are you saying you're going to have like little hubs, you'll license it out to a zeolite producer in Missouri or something and they'll process it there so they're closer to the end user at that point. So you're not sending trucks all across North America or wherever in the world? That is exactly correct. So let me give you another example of that. To ship um, processed zeolite from our British Columbia mine over to say the East Coast in Halifax or the east of uh, uh, any of the states, the US states, it's a lot less expensive to actually acquire that zeolite out of Cuba, for example, and to put it on a, uh, a ship and bring it into Halifax and subsequently process, package it in Ontario and then ship it out to uh, uh, our US partners or our US uh, distribution lines. So what we've tried to do is we've looked at how we can scale so this is not just about uh, dealing with optimization of the supply chain where it's cheaper to manufacture and process. It's also about, we know that this is emergence. We know that this has the opportunity to scale rapidly. And so we've put in place enough supply to manage that scale, but also we've optimized the supply chain. Thank you. All right. So we just, uh, uh, briefly look at what our branded products are now, and you'll see it by uh, segment agricultural, industrial, and consumer. Our existing branded uh, sales products is we use natural zeolite in various particle mesh size. And right now we brand that under what's called a soil conditioner, which is our green patch. Zedlite feed has five SKUs, which is used for animal feed and similar to remove ammonia and other orders from uh, um, farms and, and barns. We have barn scents. Industrially, uh, we, we are dealing with municipalities, for example, in Alberta that are using uh, our product exclusively as a salt replacement. And for that, uh, we mine that out of our British Columbia mines and send it to them. And then also through our eco-traction brand that we're also dealing with, uh, 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 for example, consumers are composting. On the consumer side, uh, again, through our Ecotraction uh, subsidiary, we have about uh, a total of 10 SKUs, uh, um, both the soil amendment SKUs, odor removing SKUs, and salt replacement SKUs. Under development, and, and the big disruptor for us and our true differentiator is what we're referring to as our Norea products. Norea are value-added zeolites where we have a proprietary technology that allows us to embed nutrients, the full macro and micronutrients that plants need to grow. And there's really five of those products. We have a substrate, 
that is that is used to actually grow the roots of the plant and then we have a fertilizer and then as the plant leaves grow we have a powderized fertilizer that allows uh, the plant leaves to absorb uh, nutrients directly from it we also have pesticides and we also have a rooter uh, on the industrial side we're also investigating um, some work in the water treatment side municipal composting concrete products and then as we've said on the uh, consumer side, we're developing uh, eco products that are based on our Norio side to be uh, branded and distributed through our eco fraction uh, subsidiary. So a lot of uh, work underway. Um, with the Norea, is it like you've got substrate and fertilizer? Is it just a mix of zeolite and some other uh, minerals and, and, and things, or is it actually transformed in some and without giving away trade secrets or, or whatever, like, is it a baking process or is it or like, can you tell us a bit about the, what you do to zeolite to make it Norea? Yeah, so <laughs> now I have to be careful here because there is, there's quite a bit of proprietary technology. On a it, very high level, just very so we high, have... Very high level. What we do is we take a particleized uh, uh, zeolite we then cure that zeolite in soluble fertilizer. And so that soluble fertilizer can be based on crop type. So there's certain crops that need more potassium or certain crops that need more sodium, certain crops that need less iron. And so depending on the crop size, we can customize the particle. We cure that mixture and it actually then gets heated and it gets absorbed by the norea. Um, by so the, they kind of uh, bond zeolite. together, or the norea absorbs it, and then, okay. So, so th there's a lot of science behind there, but yeah. simplistically, it, it 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 binds it to the particle inside the channels of the zeolite itself, right? And then it exchanges it because of the nanotechnology nature. So as the root attaches itself to the particle, and you'll see that in a minute, what it does is it becomes a very effective exchange. In other words, it's on demand. It's a, it's a controlled on demand nutrient for, for plant growth. And it doesn't matter what the crop is. It can be used in indoor growing, which is, which is growing significantly, or it can be used in floral growing or any type of out, outdoor growing. And so that's really our focus. And, and it, the focus makes sense because of the cost of fertilizers. It uses nearly 90 to 95% less fertilizers than what growers are using today. So why don't we talk a little bit about that if you'd like. Right. So, so what is Norea? So over the last uh, year and a half, we've worked with the University of Havana to uh, acquire their technology. And they've been working on and developing this technology for the last 10 to 15 years. Norea is really a revolutionary substrate. It's a plant seeding system or a plant growing system, right? It's, it's a group of products that's used at different points in times of, of the plant growth. It's a complete nutrients that are bonded to the zeolite. So Martin, as, as you alluded to, the benefit of this is, is a faster, it grows bigger and better plant, faster, and more economically. And we'll show you some of those studies in, in a second and in an actual video. But the real benefit, as we can see in the last couple of years, is the fact that it uses nearly 90% less fertilizer. If you look at how commercial growers go today, they go out to their fields and they're spraying their fields with soluble fertilizer. And so there's a lot of runoff and there's a lot of waste. And that's also bad for the environment and it gets into the waterways and it leaches. By taking nearly a tenth of that same amount of water, uh, soluble fertilizer and embedding it directly into the nutrients, the plant roots are actually attracted to the zeolite particle because of the what's called the cash and exchange capability. This is ionic exchange. And so a lot of scientists believe that plants have a consciousness. And if you take a look in the bottom right hand corner, what you're going to see is some microscopic pictures of what happens with the roots of plants. They actually center themselves and then engulf themselves around the zeolite particle itself. And then they exchange and take nutrients when they need them. This does not, the nature of the nanotechnology, the zeolite means it doesn't leach, which is extremely important because this solves for one of the largest agricultural environmental problems out there. And that's leaching of uh, waste, uh, 
uh, fertilizer into waters, which we know creates blooms and all sorts of environmental issues. Uh, zeolite is an on-demand product. It does not release its, its nutrients unless it's asked for directly by the plant root. What's interesting is our model is a very unique model in the sense that we believe the best way to show this and to drive this is by having third-party validation. There's a couple of really uh, good quotes on here, Martin. The first one comes from uh, Derek Smith. And, and Derek Smith has done, uh, sorry, Derek Schultz has done a lot of research for us out of Ontario at a college called Niagara College. And the other uh, independent research facility we're using over the last year and a half to test this is uh, uh, Vineland Research and Innovation. And in each case, what we were doing is we're trying to see, compare, commercially used fertilizers and, and the grow processes they use today versus exchanging that with this Norea product. And the effects have been incredible. In the case of uh, all the tests that we've done, we've seen a reduction in crop time by one to two weeks. And this is after a number of commercial crops have been tested. And so I'm gonna just talk to what actually uh, we've been able to show through some of our validation studies. I want uh, um, your, your audience to maybe just focus on the uh, potting trial, for example. There's three, three trials that we've taken here. In the first trial, we've just used plain zeolite, which we know absorbs about 60% of, of its weight in water. A measurement of a plant's health, a, a, a potting health, is really how much chlorophyll, what's its chlorophyll content index? And as you can see on the right, the just using plain zeolite, you're still getting good growth out of that plant because it's exchanging nutrients at 39.73. As you get into the Norea, it immediately goes up to 54.63, and then compare that to ProMix, which is the commercially used fertilizer systems that nearly 90 to 95% of growers use today at 47.68%. If you look in the middle, you'll see that, that through our potting trials, we've already got uh, flowers growing uh, through the, just using 25% Nerea mixed with soil. In the, the other proof to the point is on the left-hand side, if you look at um, the basil, for example, you'll see on the control, which is just using plain, uh, a fertilizer, you'll see the growth. And then the middle one is there's actually nothing used and then just using 25% Norea. Over that same period of time, you'll see it. And I think, I think what I'd like to do now with your permission, uh, Martin, is I've got a one minute video and I'm just gonna kind of, uh, because the, the uh, sound is not real, I'll just drive it to you. So this, this, these are trials done out of independent research centers in Ontario, agricultural research centers. You're going to see in the first example here, you're going to see lettuce that's grown in what's called oasis tubes, oasis cubes, sorry. And oasis cubes, what they do is they use soluble fertilizer, which gets kind of absorbed into the cube itself. And after 21 days, this is what lettuce looks like. As you go through this, you'll see that the grower will show you what the oasis cube looks like. And then as it goes through, you're now going to see after 21 days what only 25% Norea looks like. So if you can go ahead and, and, and hit the, uh, the video, I'll let the audience review it. All right. So this is 21 days using uh, commonly grow methods today. And, and the grower will show you what an oasis cube looks like. And it's kind of dunked in soluble fertilizer. And that's what that lettuce looks like 21 days. And then 21 days using only 25% Norea uh, with uh, uh, just a, a peat moss mix or a soil mix. And as you can see, there's quite a significant difference in it. Sometimes seen is believing. We believe that this product um, uh, is significantly disruptive for agriculture. And if you look at what's going on in the world now, um, the timing of this is perfect. So let's, let's take a look at what that means for the grower. And uh, uh, a normal crop size in lettuce, just by tray. So growers and indoor growers and basil, each tray usually has about 16 plants. It takes about 30 days and they get 12 crops per year. The wholesale price as of last month for that tray of 16 is between $445 and $471. By using only 25% Norea and an additional cost of 
they're now getting 16 crops because the urea crops within 22 to 23 days, which means they're gonna see an incremental revenue of 148 to $157. That's a 33% incremental revenue. What's important is when we started these validation studies last year, and we continue these validation studies, we really focus on the incremental revenue. What we didn't take into account last year is that fertilizer prices are, are just soaring 400%, 300% year over year. And so what we're saying now is this is driving not only a 33% incremental revenue, but at 90% less cost of usage of fertilizer, because you're only using about 10% of the fertilizer that you would use in a normal uh, grow pattern. So not only are you getting incremental revenue, but you're getting significant decrease in your costs. And it, it seems right now that the whole world in terms of agriculture are looking at different ways of, of amending their soil, improving their soil because there's such a scarcity of fertilizer. Not that it's expensive, but it's even very hard to come by. So we'll go to the next one real quickly if I could. And that this is the same sort of validation studies. And these are studies conducted again independently of, of our usage. This comes uh, out of Vineland uh, Innovation and Research. Again, in this case, we're looking at lettuce, not, not basil. Lettuce is the same sort of crop percentage. It takes 30 days using a pro mix or a normal fertilizer mix grow methodology. That tray of 16, they would grow receives between 391 to about $415. With lettuce, what we found is not only does it crop a lot faster than basil, it crops within 20 days using only 25% urea. So we moved from 12 crops for that grower into 18 crops. In this particular case, in validation after validation study, we're seeing a 50% increase in incremental revenue. But we also now have to take into account that that same grower is using nearly 90% less fertilizer. And so this becomes an extremely uh, uh, disruptive product for, for, for growers. And is this one you used, was that for the, um, like the grow medium where the uh, fertilizer sort of embedded in the grow medium or is that more on the, the, fer the Norea fertilizer side so of it or are they kind of intermixed? So, so in these, both these tests, both in the uh, basil and the lettuce tests, it's strictly one product and that's our substrate product. So that's taking 25% urea, mixing it in, in a grow medium like soil or mixing it with peat moss and soil. That's, that's all we've done in, in this particular case. Okay. Compared to that same grow media, less the, less the zeolite or the urea as we call it, right? And they're using kind of like, uh, grow mix or, or embedded fertilizer or soluble fertilizer. And so that, that's what's taken place in these validation studies. So we're doing comparing to how the grower, what the grower, 90% of growers use today, both outdoor growers and indoor growers. And we're comparing it to, okay, so let's replace what you do today with only 25% urea in your same grow medium, but do not use fertilizer, just use water. So keep in mind our urea has all the macro and micro nutrients already embedded. There's absolutely no necessary usage for additional fertilizer. And, and that's, and that's right. during the, um, your processing of it, you embed these, um, of those minerals and stuff into it. That's the Norea process. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. But what's even a further benefit is for large scale indoor growers, for example, um, it is rechargeable. So after a number of crops, obviously the, nerea, the nutrients in the urea get used up. There's, there's a simple technology process we use that allows that grower to just add more soluble fertilizer himself or herself directly to the urea. So the actual product gets reused if, if they so desire. In a lot of cases, in floral, for example, if you're an outdoor grower, you're not going to replace it. But if you're an indoor grower, you may want to reuse the form of the cubes, the Norea cubes that we've created. So there's, there's a lot of, again, the environmental benefits. One of the biggest issues that indoor growers have today is what to do and how to uh, economically and socially sustainably uh, get rid of these oasis cubes. In the case of Norea, there's absolutely no environmental impact whatsoever.
I want to just uh, uh, briefly, Martin, talk about one of our core differentiators. And this is all about allowing us to attach customers and keeping customers for a larger engagement period of time. We've onboarded a group of about 13 scientists who have uh, expertise in chemists, engineers, ergonomics, uh, physicists, PhDs, and they have been working in zeolite through the University of Havana for the last 20 plus years. And this team now has come together and is uh, assigned to us to consult with our customers. So let's take an example, right, in agriculture. Though we're doing all our validations and our studies, we have, we're not just stopping where, we're, where we are now. We want to continue, for example, to explore what's the next set of products that are under the Norea uh, particleization. Is it 100% organic versus the inorganic? Uh, we also know that zeolite engineering uh, is used in a tremendous amount of health benefits. And so, though we're not focused on these right now, in the future products for us is, is going to be in antacids and cholesterols and things of that nature. We already are doing a lot of work in, in water purification and pesticides, but we're also uh, doing, ask this team to do a lot of work in terms of uh, uh, the benefits of using zeolite in, in cement. So again, it's all about uh, providing a holistic solution for our customers. And that is our core differentiator. And so in the last year and a half, we've really focused on a couple core things. We've onboarded a new leadership team or we've aggregated an additional group of leaders to work with us. We have optimized their supply chain and we have uh, acquired a technology that we've tested and validated for the last about 13 months that we're ready to go to market with at a time when the market desperately needs it. And so I think we're in a really good team. Mark, so oh, let's hear, you've got a lot of um, research projects going on. Do you kind of outsource that to universities or research groups, or do you have an internal lab where you, 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 you work on things or how, how do you run your R and D program? So, so, our business model for R&D is, is to outsource it. And the reason for that is we believe that it, it provides much better credibility. It pro it's less capital intensified for us. We're not acquiring tremendous amount of equipment and capital, but we're also dealing with organizations that because they're funded by government, for example, universities in, in Ontario, we know that their validations are independent and incredible. And so we've developed significant relationships over the last year and a half with Vineland, Ontario, and Niagara College, Ontario. Both those are uh, unique agricultural research centers that are, are extremely well known in the industry for their independent research. And of Cuba, um, without getting into too much of the science, is we've taken that team of 13 scientists and we've signed a exclusive contract whereby we ask those scientists to form themselves as our NERIA or as our Ze independent zeolite research team. And an example of that is uh, last week we had a, uh, a group of doctors approach me asking, can, be, can zeolite, for example, be used to remove toxic metals from um, cancer patients. And so we then go to this team and we say, can you do some R&D in this space and do some validation studies? So that is one of our core differentiators. If you look at what other zeolite providers do, like, without naming names, they strictly mine the product, package the product, and get the product out. We believe we have to be a value-added provider. We have to provide that customer, not just with the product, but we want to solve that customer's future problem. And we want to be very much a leader in, in green tech, but also a huge transformational leader in, in uh, the agricultural space, because we want to be able to feed more, but we also want to be able to do it in an environmentally safe way. I just want to talk about supply for a minute, because we know that the emergence of zeolite is, is new. It's been around for a long time, but now everyone's starting to look at it. And I'll, I'll show your audience in a second why we know that. Out of our Bromley Creek facility, uh, that mine, that mine right now is a 30-year mine lease, and we know we have about 
1,400, nearly 1,500 hectares of property that's been measured as a qualified zeolite resource. And we have tonnage that we haven't even started to take out of that. We also have another group uh, called the uh, uh, Future uh, Zeolite Quarry Site that's been resource reported at about 46 million tons of zeolite with a 100-year lifespan. And that's the Sun Group. What's important here is this is a specific type of zeolite that works for us in agriculture and in uh, water purification and in the areas that we are driving revenue. It's a very high valued zeolite. And so we've looked at that. In terms of what we're trying to do, we are repositioning the company uh, by, by onboarding new sales resources. We believe we can be at about, on average, between 20, $25 million revenues by the year by year four of our uh, new vision plan, we want to be at about uh, a gross margin of between 24 and 26 percent, and we're really tracking conservatively between four and seven percent net profit. And so we've onboarded a team of leaders that have not only been in agriculture but CPT have been leaders at companies like. Uh, um, Walmart. Uh, we've got leaders that have, that have been senior executives at, at Loblaws, at Shoppers Drug Mart. We have uh, our, our go-to-market uh, commercialization officer out of California. He's done work with Nike and with all the ag tech companies down there. So um, we really are focused on, on driving those revenues, but we want to be that value provider. So not only do we have our own supply out of Bromley Creek and Sun Group that allows us to scale up, Martin, but we also have supply relations that we use existing today on Bear River, KMI, St. Cloud Mining, and San Andreas Mine. And that goes back to what you were discussing earlier, where um, they can mine the product, you add some uh, your te IP technology to it, and they're closer to the end user. Um, those all seem sort of south and on the west of the U.S., um, obviously, Cuba is more east, but south. Do you have things like in, in the like highly popular? Well, I guess it's not so much for agriculture because there's not as much agriculture there. But do you are are you going to build relationships with people along the the east coast? Absolutely. And so so let me let me let me be specific to the east coast because it is very expensive to transport a ton of of zeolite embedded product from the west coast to the east coast, and so. Um, let's take our, our current relationship with Bear River, which is kind of out, out of Ohio, sorry, my apologies, but we also are, have our relationships and our, our contracts with uh, bringing zeolite, which is a high-valued zeolite directly out of Cuba, putting it on a ship. So that can be brought into Canada to deal with Canada's supply, but our, our relationships in the Midwest and the East Coast mining organizations, zeolite mining organizations that we use today. Again, this has all been about being able to first look at how we can optimize their supply chain, but understanding that that supply chain is optimized by geo geographical location. So it's not just about having the supply, it's about having that supply in the right place so that you're optimizing your costs to get it to your end customer. So those well, partners you mentioned, do they all have that similar sort of high quality um, zeolite that you have? In yes. Okay. Yes. So we're dealing with one very specific type of zeolite, which has what we refer to as a very high cash and exchange capacity. And that is a kleptonite zeolite. And that is specifically used for the five or six revenue streams that we are looking at. As I alluded to earlier, there's about 51 different zeolites. And on the flip side, because this is emergence, it's really important that your audience understands that there's also artificial zeolite that's been used in oil refinement and the detergents and softening water for the last 30 years. So um, it's much more expensive than natural zeolite, but it's already, the science is already there. This is not new science. This product's been out there. What we're doing is we're using the emergence of environmentally sustainable needs to address those needs now. And that's why there's significant demand. I want to talk to that demand for a second. If, if your audience can take a look at the trend of annual publications in zeolite agriculture, this is what's really exciting about this. If we look from 2000 to, to about 2012, very little research or periodicals or science articles done on 
uh, agriculture applications using CLA. But now look at the last three to four years, you'll see this nearly this hockey stick effect because growers are recognizing that there's a need to start looking at uh, nature's nanotechnology and use that to amend soil to reduce their cost. So we know that there's this huge emergence. And this is exactly why we've repositioned uh, international zeolite to address agricultural needs as a very high focused area for us. So not only do we have a value added product by uh, implement, uh, embedding nutrients directly into the product, but we also have the supply to be used just to amend soil. So it's not just Norea, which is the embedded product, but it's using natural zeolite too. And so we're addressing an emergence. And that's why if you take a look at the overall market size, the overall market size for natural zeolite in North America has actually been quite small. But we believe that that's going to significantly change as it did with the number of publications. In terms of intellectual product properties, uh, mining cer certifications and product certifications, uh, let's start with registrations. Our products are fully registered. And what's nice about the Norea that we, we're fully investigating is it because it uses a registered by CFIA, it's seen as a grow medium. And because we're using uh, fertilizers are already registered with CFIA. Our, our initial investigations say that there's no need to further register that product. So we're ready to go to market with it. What we're doing is we're finishing our validations and our studies on it. And we've already had a number of discussions with some of the global leaders in, in those egg distributors that are distributing grow medias, they're distributing cubes and things that and such. We have all the safety data sheets. We are not a new company. We've just rebranded the company and we brought in new leadership. Uh, intellectual with, property. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, with you referring to the CFIA registrations, does that also apply to EPA registrations uh, down in the US where um, zeolite and, uh, and your, uh, your, your fertilizers that they're binded to uh, should uh, not require additional registration processes? Yeah. So, so Martin, that, that's a great question. We haven't done that type of due diligence, but the process is very similar to what we have up in the CFIA. Okay. And so we, we know, for example, that there are, uh, you know, KMI has certification, has OMRFRA, o o OMRI certification down in the States and, and similar. So it's a very similar process, yes. All right. Um, let me just see what else I have for, for, your, for your team here. So I wanna talk about leadership because this to me is probably what's core. And so uh, if you take a look a year and a half ago, we really, it was just Ray Paquette and myself. Ray Paquette is the existing CEO. He's been with uh, Natural Zeolite, uh, International Zeolite since its, since its founding. What we've done over the last year is we've onboarded uh, myself, uh, Ken Malone, who has about 25 to 30 years experience in CPG, is a senior VP at several uh, mass retails. We've got uh, incredible expertise in the administration corporate side of it. Uh, we have a great CFO. And then in the US, we've onboarded uh, probably one of our biggest champions of ag tech, and that's Andrew Corradini. He's our chief commercialization officer. We've also done the same thing in our advisory team. We've brought in the expertise. If you look at uh, Ron Crabtree and Dr. Fuentes, Dr. Fuentes, for example, is considered the world's leading expert in zeolite. As, and Cliff Hacking is considered one of the leaders in environmental programs. And so we've, we've known that to run good companies, it's not just about products, it's, it's about people. And so we've, we've, over the last year, is we've onboarded the right people. The other thing that we've done is we've, we know how important burn rate is. And so we've kept our burn rate of the company down between 30 and $35,000 a month. We've run extremely lean in this company. And we understand that bringing a disruptive products to market or driving new revenue streams, we need to focus on our customers and, and, and get that done first before we start onboarding a lot more staff. What do we need in the company? So our plans between, uh, well, we're already past FY 2022, but going over the next several years is, you know, we, we've, we've really focused this past year, Martin, on our planning and our repositioning of the company, and we've got a good check mark. The other thing we've done in this last year, so we spent nearly a full year validating uh, the results of our studies at, at our independent research centers. 
we've also onboarded and worked with a number of large scale agricultural companies to say, are you interested in that? Moving forward, we're looking at expansion of the team, raising some proceeds, but really looking at continuing our product development, especially in the areas of water treatment and, and rebranding, re expanding our agriculture and our home, home offering. Important to us is we're continuing uh, product development research, testing and validation. We believe it's important to invest in R&D. That R&D has a return on investment. Uh, it, we can actually use the consultants that we use as a revenue stream. On the operational side, we need to do some upgrades to our Bromley Creek, and then we need to begin to start developing our Sun Group because we know the emergence of this means we need to scale pretty rapidly. And then uh, also uh, continue to operationalize our go-to-market uh, uh, requirements for Norea, our water treatment authorization, and then start looking at in the future how we're going to drive revenues in, in motor and concrete side of it. And of course, along the way, we are differentiators about creating awareness and education, 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 education. And I'll kind of stop there because I, I, I think uh, um, as a publicly traded company, the numbers are there. We're, we're a small cap company, but I, I think I'll close there, Martin, unless there's, there's any questions you want to kick in. Yeah, just um, we have a bunch of questions from the audience that we'll, we'll hop to shortly. Um, I, I guess in the... Um, in the Norea, when do, when should we start seeing some revenues coming out of that uh, on the initial stages? Right now, you have modest revenues with actually kind of decent margins attached to it. You don't have much of a burn rate. Could like um, are are we going to start seeing substantial revenues revenues at, like in the back half of the year? It start ramping up or. I, I think now that we've completed our validation and our studies, but we're ready to go to market and we're going to see uh, we, we've actually focused on in next year driving about 4 million gross revenue just on the Norea side, on the product side. And we think that that's going to scale pretty rapidly. What we didn't take into account, as I alluded to before, Martin, is we didn't take into account the scarcity of, of fertilizer resources and things of that nature. So, so, so yeah, we're going to see uh, pretty rapidly scaled uh, revenues. Uh, right now, most of our revenues are coming from our eco-traction subsidiary and from some of the wholesale work that we do in, for example, artificial turf or in some of the uh, work that we're doing and the early work that we're doing in water reclamation. Right. Okay, so let's uh, hop to the uh, questions here. Um, why has IZ never built their own mill? So, so an early decision was made. If, if you if you take a look at, and there's just two answers to this. The, the early decision by Ray Paquette is to focus on the company as a mining exploration company, and we had partnered with a, a great provider out of British Columbia called APL. And APL has been our operator. We have an operators agreement, and again, it, it it's it's where do you put your capitalization in? Do, do you spend your own capital and your own equipment, or do you? you outsource that. Our, our business model says we basically outsource a lot of that. And, and so we believe that's the way to go. All right. Um, who is going to manufacture the Norea in Canada for you guys? So, so, so we have set up or we're in the process of setting up a pilot plant. Um, now that we kind of own that technology. We're actually learning that technology. We have um, driven a small purpose pilot plant that we're building in Ontario. And we're probably going to do the same thing out in British Columbia. Uh, we will sublicense that. So there's a number of different models that we allude to. We believe that sublicing that to, to an operator um, is the way to go. Um, the invest, we know what the investment and in capital is to, to build a, a, a Norea plant. And so we're, we're going to be looking at sublicing that to, to various operators. Can you give us any sense on what the CapEx would be on a Norea plant? It's just order of magnitude or? So, 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 so again, it depends on the size of it and the demand of it. Right. Yeah. And so, so I, I can tell you now that the CapEx on our pilot plants is, is under a million dollars, which allows us to produce just a few tons a day. Right. Yeah. Um, up to, you know, when you scale, you're looking anywhere from, you know, 20 million, 20 million to 30 million in, in capital infrastructure, including operational costs. So it depends on the size and the scale, Martin. The, the process to embed is not capital intensified. 
It, it uses energy, but it's not capital intensified. And most of the equipment is not what I say customizable equipment. It's equipment that's already out in the marketplace and is readily available. So your pilot plant cost a, a million bucks or so, but it'll, it sounds like a couple of tons a day, it'll be able to produce some revenues as well. It'll, yeah. it'll okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And we'll is your, you, like, because right now you're running on an asset light model where you're outsourcing and licensing stuff. Is that generally the plan you're going to move forward with as well? Keep things uh, asset light or could you be needing to raise some money in a few years for a $20, $30 million uh, facility? So, so, so our plan now is, is, is to develop those relationships with those organizations that have the expertise in what they do. We believe our core competency is in being a solutions provider. In other words, the R&D and the development of products and the marketing of products. But we also believe that, for example, the best example I'll give you is, is uh, International Zeolite is a mining corporation right now. It does not have relationships with growers. And so is it better for us to develop those relationships with, with growers or is it better for us to find a, a existing distributor that has all those relationships over the last 20 to 30 years, sub-license the, the product out to them or allow them to distribute on our part? So it's all about where do you put your resources and, your, and how you best uh, capitalize those resources. So yes, uh, uh, we're, our business model does incorporate a lot of third-party uh, options. So it'll be a lot of sort of royalties and that sort of a thing yes. and, and, and so forth, as opposed to building your own facilities. All right. Correct. What volumes of zeolite need to be, uh, at what, like, what, so what volumes of zeolite need to be moved to make money? I guess, what, what's your break-even level or, or what kind of volume do you need to break even? So, so here's the good news, right? Unlike just plain mining zeolite, and processing it into mesh size and then putting it into packages. The beauty of Nerea is it's a high, very high margin product. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, that question really is dependent on, on how much we scale and how quickly we scale. But we can say that uh, compared to our other revenue streams, the, the gross margin is nearly double compared to those revenue streams. So the payback or the, the, the size of that investment is much lower. All right. Uh, interesting question here. Does shipping to Halifax from Cuba and processing in Ontario, can you avoid U.S. Cuba sanctions that way? And sort of once you process it in Canada, ship yeah. it down to the U.S.? So, so we have been doing a lot of work in this space. And so there are um, specific licenses and exemptions that allow us to uh, uh, deal in in full North America. And so by acquiring this technology, right, we're working with a law firm down there that says we've acquired the technology, we're actually doing production of that technology. And then we're gonna find partners in the US and, and train them up to, to do production of that technology. The question then goes back to the law firm that's working on our sanctions is does that directly benefit the, the Cuban government. We don't believe it does. And so that's work that we're doing now to, to offset it. But there are a lot of examples where there, there are exclusions to, especially in agriculture and research, there's a lot of exclusions that allows, allows us to do that work. But it's ongoing work. Right now, our focus from a revenue model standpoint will be Canada. And by the time we get this thing scaled, we'll, we'll have solved any uh, issues as it relates to being able to process and manufacture our own product or uh, process directly in the US. That's a great question. So thank you. All right. Um... What is the cost to add the Norea? I'm not so so I, I think maybe that question is really saying uh, I'm not sure how to take that. That could mean yeah. what's the cost to make it or is that what's the cost to add it, right? So yeah. um, it, I'm gonna try it in two ways if I could. All right. Okay, so so first the 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 overall process to to embed nutrients in zeolite uh, requires energy consumption and requires soluble fertilizer and it requires drying and packaging and then there's a whole bunch of things that happen along the way the from a grower standpoint uh, we believe there's a significant cost reduction 
right? And so the number one, uh, that grower is gonna use 90% less fertilizer, for example. Number two, that grower is gonna have much fa much faster crops happening, so more incremental revenue. But from a cost side, we now believe, and though we were focused on the incremental revenue side of it, we now that we know that uh, fertilizer costs have gone up 400, 500% or whatever that number is, that the, the cost to incorporate NERI is a lot cheaper than to use the 100% the spray method that they use now. Hope that answers the question. All right. Um, so do you, you need to kiln dry the Norea during the process? So, so, <laughs> so we're starting to get into kind of like the, the, the process of creating Norea and I'd, I'd rather not, but with, you know, it's a proprietary process. Uh, yeah. Needless to say, um, the high level that you asked me says we need to figure out how to get soluble fertilizer into the particle. And then there's different ways of doing that. And there's different process of doing that. And, and I'd rather not share that magic, but yeah. but the, the question is about bonding them together in any, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, can you talk about what percentage of market share um, you guys have at this point, or is that kind of a real relevant question or? So, 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 so that, that's a hard one. And, you know, I was on with one of our advisors last night and we were looking at the total market size for natural zeolite and itself is extremely small because it's, it's so emergence, right? And so it, it's, it's invalid to ask that. What we're going after in the various revenue streams, so we're going after between two to 4% in each of the revenue streams from a North American standpoint. The challenge of answering that question is because it's emergence, zeolite as a product is still emergence, right? It's hard to measure market share because the market, the overall market share for natural zeolite is actually quite small. And so when we go back and we're at now at 50 to 60 percent of that market share, people are going to look, well, how's that possible? And that's possible because the market size itself is relatively small. So if, for example, we, we drive a huge uptick in agriculture demand for Norea or even, even natural zeolite, we will grow that market share. We have conservatively forecasted um, between 1% and 4% in each of the revenue streams that we're going to. All right. Um, there was a question regarding uh, your the strength of your intellectual property. Are you keeping that as sort of trade secrets in that, or is there a patent um pipeline uh that you'll be uh building up as well so so right now the um each the proprietary technology is patented out of uh, the university of havana and we are undertaking patents uh, pending right now both us and, and and in canada both those applications that have moved forward and we're working with law firms to get them patented um it, it, yeah that that's the answer to that all right uh we're th the reduced or eliminated fertilizer costs uh, factored into the comparisons. I'm guessing the no. lettuce and whatever comparisons. No, actually, actually they were not. And so again, uh, our focus on that was um, by, by, by decreasing the time to crop, the, the grower um, will, will have uh, significantly increased number of crops. That was what our focus, that's what we were trying to validate. What we didn't take into account, what we should have taken into account is that the cost of fertilizer has gone through the moon and we've actually now reduced that cost. So I uh, know it did not take that into account at all. All right. And um, uh, uh, do you, would, can you talk to so someone who has a question, competitors question mark? Any, yeah. like, do you have, is it just other zeolite guys or is it other fertilizer types or other new materials that are going into the ag space or? So, so there are, there are competitors then, but those competitors are very much focused on, on natural processed zeolite, that zeolite that's mined and meshed into different particle sizes and then bag. All right. Uh, are you selling into China or I guess, or will you sell into China, both currently and in the future? So, so we, as a matter of fact, last Monday we had a chat with a, a funder group out of China, and, and 
and those are ongoing discussions. All right. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, we still have a whole bunch going here. Uh, could you uh, question here on your, um, your, your burn rate and your balance sheet and so forth? Because you, you did mention your burn rate a bit earlier. Uh, so so the, the question is, what is your current cash position? Do you anticipate that the burn rate will significantly increase? I, I, is, that, is that the question that you're asking? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, the, the short answer to that is, is uh, yes, our, our burn rate will go up because we're onboarding additional sales folks and we're onboarding leadership right now. That leadership is, is, is not a cost for us, right? And so um, that will be significantly offset we trust by a significant increase in sales. Our challenge to date has been the lack of resources that are working with distributors to deal with our existing product lines. And that's why we're trying to address that by hiring new sales reps and, and bringing on new talented people. So the answer right. is yes. Um, uh, someone says 800,000 for pilot plant. You were saying a million, or, or is that a question or, okay. I, I, uh, I think we are, uh, would licensees sell product as Norea or would they brand and sell under their own banners? So, so our agreements in, in order to, uh, oof, that's a really good question. Um, I would say both. So we're gonna have branded Norea products, both on the consumer side, which we believe will be a huge segment for us, right? Yeah. But on the uh, large scale worldwide or global licensors, right? They're gonna to wanna to brand it under their own name, right? Or they're just gonna to wanna to brand their product without talking that it is an embedded a Norea. Yeah. So, yeah. so both. All right. And, um... How long would it take licensees to brand package and sell Norea into farmers, growers market at large? So, so our, our business, and that's a great question. Our, our business model basically says that we're going to work with three or four of the large, I'll call them Dutch providers today. And so I'll just throw some names out there and then we do not have agreements, but let's, let's say, for example, everyone knows of Scott's. If we were to work with a Scott's type company, which is also our, already a global commercial provider into that uh, egg sector, right? Um, our model basically says that's the route for us to go. We do not want to sell direct to the end user. Right. Okay. Um, I think we're wrapped up here. Good. So, Mark, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to uh, chat with us. And um, yeah, looking forward to uh, seeing as the company progresses, maybe get you back in a while and, and, and we can uh, address and uh, look at all the how things have progressed and so forth. So thank you very Great. much for taking the time. Well, thank you. And, and thank you to the audience for taking the time to listen to our story. Appreciate it. All right. Have a great day, have a great day and talk to you again soon. Cheers.